Hello guys, how's it going? Alex Grandpa one here. Today we've got Shiroko in and we've got the Lowering Springs video for you. This has been requested a lot recently and a lot of people have been talking about the drops from 30 to 40 mil. Uh, so what I've done here, I went for 35 mil drop, which I think is going to be ideal for me for where I drive. And I went for the H and R brand, which is very popular as most of you probably already know. And I got them from Demon Twigs. I will put the link in the description below for the springs. The team there was really friendly guys. I do hope to work with them in the future as well. Uh, so this is what we're going to start with. We're going to drop the car today to 35 mil springs and we're going to see what it's going to look like afterwards. So as you can see, just a closer look, obviously the gap is massive here. It looks like it's an off-road car and yeah, I know it looks horrible. So thanks to the springs today, I'm sure they're going to change the look of the car completely. I'm hoping they're going to drop it more than halfway, which I think is going to look great. Obviously this is 18 wheels and the tire is 225-40-18. So just so you know for your spec as well, this one's a little bit stretched on this wheel, which it doesn't help with the gap as well. But never mind, it's all clear. I'm pretty sure once I've dropped it as well, it's going to be all clear. Nothing's going to be rubbing on the full locks or etc. So again, the 4x4 look at the back here as well. Massive gap, even bigger than in the front. But yeah, I'm sure that once we fit the springs, it's going to look sick. Right guys, just for usual, I have to mention this, when you're working on a car and doing jobs like this or taking the wheels off, please make sure the car is safe. Obviously, I know not a lot of you got car lifts, so if you're working with the jacks and obviously axle stands, please make sure you install them in the correct places. On the VWs, you have got a little triangle there where the strongest point is, so please make sure you're using it there and the car is safe when you're working. Uh, now obviously, the main issue on doing this job is your front suspension because you've got the shock absorber, you have to remove the spring off of there. It's a bit more involved, but I'm going to show you now how to do it. What I'm going to do today is show you obviously how to do one spring on each side because it's obviously going to be exactly the same on the other side. So I'll do one on the front and one on the back. Right, so what I'm going to do now is take all of the wheels off because for this job, obviously on each side, the wheels will have to come off. If not, you're not going to be able to get the suspension off of there. So here you've got the main tools I'm going to be using today. Uh, obviously the gun to get the wheels off and all the suspension components really helpful and it's a very good quality gun and again the 149 piece kit of draper tools spot on brilliant quality i've been using this for the last six seven months i'm going to start on the rear ones first because uh, there is something that can go wrong which is the bolt that goes all the way through here the 18 mil uh, it can get seized or stuck in there or snap. Uh, in most cases, it's not going to happen. It's only when there's corrosion or issues like that. Uh, so I'm going to start at the back. They're easy and quicker to do as well. Uh, so we're going to need this 18 mil socket on this side and 18 mil spanner on the other side on the nut to get it undone. But before you do that, obviously, if you're doing it on the lift, you're going to need transmission jack to support this because obviously there's a lot of force on that spring. And as soon as you're going to undo it, you're going to try and push that down and you can get injured so please be careful take the force of, of the spring away by supporting the part down here the arm and I'm going to show you how to do it now to make sure that you're safe so as you can see obviously this is the spring that we're going to be replacing the force is going all the way into this lower arm here this is the 18 mil bolt that we're going to be trying to get out of there but before you do that like I said you need to be careful and use the transmission jack I'm going to do now here to remove the force of the spring. Obviously, you have to be really careful here. So, if you do it that way, it lifts it up a little bit. So, that removed the force that you got off the spring pushing down on the arm. And at this stage, I would use WD 40 or maintenance spray to make it easier for the bolt to come out. Also, what I would like to mention is whenever you do a job like this and you've got a little bit of thread on the other side, please do make sure that you clean it up with the wire brush. I'll see what we're going to do when I start on doing it. 
You can do the knot first if you want, it's up to you. And I would say we're lucky guys, it didn't get seized up. As you can see it's already pressing it a lot, the shock did go in a little bit. So that's where you go on the other side, just 80 mil nut and the washer, so make sure you keep them safe. As you're gonna see, once I let go of the pressure on the transmission jack, you're gonna push it down. Like I said, there's a lot of force there, so go slowly, please. There you go. There's definitely a lot of force there. So get to the point where it's loose, which is pretty much here. Now you can get rid of the transmission jack. And as you can see, the spring is out of there. Nice and easy. So just to make sure when you're taking it out of there, do remember which way it goes up. The spring is slightly different at the top and the bottom, uh, the way it curves in there. And also don't forget, you will need to reuse these rubber seals they got at the bottom where the spring locates. This stops the noise of the friction of metal with metal. So you do need them. I would clean them up. And I also like to put a little bit of copper grease at the bottom there, at the bottom of the spring, because it does help uh, all the movement. And the same at the top, you got another one at the top here. Like I say, just take note of how the spring was in there. All right, so as you can see, I put a bit of copper grease on top there. You can see where the old mark was, that's where you're gonna sit again. And at the bottom, uh, you got the locator there on this little rubber, and it will be, the hole will be at the bottom on the arm there. You'll be able to see, so you need to make sure that it goes back in there. Put a bit of copper grease there to make it easier. Also put a little bit of copper grease at the bottom there. So like I said, make sure that goes in the hole that you got at the bottom. So again, push the arm a little bit down. Locate it in there. Yeah, that's lovely. It's in there. It pops out at the bottom. And then you obviously got copper grease around here as well. Make it easy to slide on there. And you're in place. So all we need now is obviously transmission jack back here. Get a bit of wood in the middle and pump it up. Now be careful because like I said, there will be force, not as much as the other one was, because this one's obviously lower in spring, so there's, it's shorter, but just pump it up till it aligns with the hole that you got here. You might need a screwdriver to just adjust it a little bit to get the bolt back in there. But as you can see, nice and easy to get it back in there. So just to show you what I'm talking about, as you can see, it's not perfectly aligned because obviously there's still pressure on there. Um, if you put the bolt in there, it won't go. Don't try and um, gun it in there as it is because that will damage the thread and then you are definitely in trouble. So what you can do is just get a flat blade screwdriver, whatever screwdriver, get it in there and just wiggle it about. You can get it from the other side as well to adjust it as you're putting the bolt in and that will help get it in place. So you can see, I'm moving it from the other side. Perfect, and now you just have to adjust it on this end as well. You can pump it up a little bit. There you go. Once it's all the way in, don't forget you need to put the washer and the nut on there and do it up to the correct torque setting that I will put in the description below. So like I said, make sure you do it up properly. Right, so I'm gonna gun it up a little bit just to make sure that it's safe and doesn't come out of there. And like I said, afterwards you will need to torque it up and the torque settings will be in the description below. Uh, the other thing I would like to mention is because um, I got this up with the transmission jack, it's kind of in a normal riding position so you can do it up, torque it up completely. But if you're not sure what the normal riding position will be, you can only torque it up or you should only torque it up when the wheel is back on and it's in resting position on the floor. Because uh, that's what they recommend doing when you're doing them up, make sure it's on the floor and then talk, do the final torque. So once you've done that, you'll see obviously once I remove the jack out, they're going to drop a little bit. And that is it guys. Guys, this is a very important information when you're doing the passenger side rear spring. So before you undo anything, you need to disconnect the unit, the suspension adjustment unit. It sends a lot of information to your car, so don't mess it up, please. You can either unbolt, unbolt the top bit there. There's two bolts holding it in, but they're usually quite rusty. Or you can unbolt the bottom bit here, which again, they will be rusty and they can snap. The personal and best thing to do 
if you're careful is spray with a maintenance spray either top or bottom but i would recommend this one the bottom one spray it in there clean it up and then use similar tool to this and just pop it off of there without breaking it obviously be careful there you go that's off of there uh, that will avoid breaking it while it's off please clean this up because there's a little bit of corrosion on there clean it up uh, you can put a bit of maintenance spray on it again and once you've done the job pop this back on obviously so your DCC is working Right, so once the back is done, this is where the issue starts, is where you're doing the front ones because they're a lot more involved and a bit more difficult and there's a few more things that can go wrong here. Uh, so there's a few ways of doing this job. Some people like to remove the drive shaft completely to make it easier, but sometimes it does get seized up in there with this bolt and then it's just impossible to get it out of there. I'm going to try and do it today without getting the bolt out of there. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is a quick breakdown of what we're doing here. You got three 30 mil bolts at the top there uh, you can see the threads going down here you need to clean them and spray them with a maintenance spray uh, and they the first thing that i would recommend to undo because if they don't come undone or if they snap then you will need a top mount and it's going to be a bit more difficult to do the job so undo them all the way then do them up again because it needs to stay in there completely next step undo the enter bar link which is not here clean it up grease it up undo it both sides will be the same you need to get the plug off of this shock absorber that you got there, spray it with a bit of maintenance spray that will come off. Um, next thing, there's a little bracket with 10 mil, get that off of there. Uh, there's a unit, the suspension control unit that tells it the height of the suspension, like we had at the back there, they told you you need to take off. I do recommend doing exactly the same thing on this side. Pop it off of there to avoid any damages while you're moving the suspension. And the last bit will be the bolt they got at the back here on the hub. You need to undo it, get it out of there, and there's a chisel or a tool that you need to use to get behind there to spread it open so it's easier to get the shock out of there. So make sure you're being careful with all the wires and everything else in there so you don't damage them as well. Just be sensible there. So yeah, this is just a quick breakdown of what we're gonna be doing now. All right, so now just a quick one to show you how to get to the three bolts that you got at the top. You lift this cover off. You don't need to take the wipers off. There's enough room for you to get the tools there. There's one there, another one there, and one at the back there. So use the tools that you got to obviously undo them. Like I said, don't forget to spray the threads and clean the threads at the bottom there. And when you're undoing them, don't use the gun. Just use um, your ratchet and fill it. If it's getting seized up, then do it up again. Spray it again, clean it up, and then try and undo it again. So as you can see, I've done them all, the thread is all clear and done them up as well. Uh, so we're going to leave them there for now and we're going to do all the work at the bottom and get them out in the end. So as you can see, I already got that off of there at the bottom, same like the rear one, use the tool, spread it a little bit, that's off. The next step will be to spray this, clean it up and there's a tab that you push back, it lifts this part up and you push it back and it comes off. Like I said, when it's nice and clean, it does help. Right, so get that 10 mil out of there to get the bracket out of the way. There we are, that's off. That will give us more movement. I would still get the wiring off of there. Now, to get the nut off of there, if you start undoing it, you can try and do it with the gun. If it's clear enough, you might be very lucky and it will come undone, but I really doubt it. There's a little locator there for the tool in the middle and it's this tool here. It's like a VAG group car tool. I do use a lot of them, CRV6, that's the size of it. As you can see, I'm gonna put that in the description below. You can get a kit of that as well. And like I said, try and do it with the gun, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna get undone. If you use the more grips on the other side, you can damage the seal that you got on the bow joint that you got on there. And you don't want that, because then it's knackered, then you will need a new anti bar link. So what you do is knock that in there using the hammer to make sure it sits in there properly. You can clean it up of any rust. So give it a tap. 
that's sitting in there nice and tight now then you're going to need 80 mil spanner on there there you go and then an adapter to hold that in place while you're trying to undo it so let me just try that is quite tight I might need to stay up with the gun oh there you go that's coming undone that's good so like I said just hold it on there while you're trying to undo it and hopefully if you start feeling it going tight please do it up again straight away and then clean the thread again and spray it with maintenance loop because if you undo it till it goes completely tight then you're seized and you will have to cut the knot off or use the pliers and put a new anti robot link which is a bit of an issue so please be careful there we are so the next step will be getting the bolt out of there that holds the shock in uh, for that you're going to need a little bag group kit uh, that you got here with the M14 let me just zoom in so you can see what you're going to need so it's M14 uh, this one is from US Pro but obviously you can get from Draper Tools and etc uh, so that will need to go in there I would clean that up properly knock it in there so it sits in there properly and then try and ungun it on the other side you got a nut there with the 18 mil spanner on it already so I'm going to try and undo it like I said, don't forget to clean the thread on the back there to make sure it's nice and free. Knock that in there. Lovely, and that com comes undone. Don't forget your nut that you got on the other side. Get the bolt out of there. You will need a good old clean with the wire brush because you can see that it's already creating a lot of corrosion. Don't want to put it back in like that. So just make sure you put the nut on the end there and don't lose it. Right, so where you got the bolt out, there's a cut in the middle there so you can open the hub a little bit. And for that, you can use a tool like this that I'm gonna put in the description below, or just a chisel. So what it does is, when you got it on a half inch ratchet, if you look, there's one flat surface and the other one's a bit wider. So you get it in there and then you turn it and it opens it up. Um, so basically get it in the back there, get the ratchet on it, turn it clockwise, so it's halfway. You'll see that it spreads it a little bit and then you can start hitting it with the hammer and trying to get the hub down off the shock absorber. But to do that, do spray it with a lot of WD-40 or maintenance spray to make it easier to come off. So like I said, half inch ratchet, get in there, turn it. And you can see it already opened a little crack there. So that is wider now. So what we're going to need is to get a bar and start pulling the lower arm down and hitting it with the hammer around this area. And you'll see it's going to start sliding off of there slowly. So this is where this tool is really handy and you can get it from Draper Tools or from the other brands. I'm going to put that in the description below. So what it does, you hook it on your, your adjust it first, obviously. Then you hook it on the lower arm and you pull it down. So like I said, there's a nut that you can adjust it with. Slide it on the right position. Get it over the arm. And that will help putting your weight on it. You can put your leg on it or put your weight on it while you're hitting it there. And that will make the job a lot easier. And that might make that difference of getting it down enough without removing the drive shaft. So locate the arm in the correct place so it doesn't slide. Get your leg over it. There you go, because we already had a tool in there, it already slid out of there, it stopped moving. So I got half of my weight on it. I did put on weight, so that does help. There you go, and that's sliding nice and easy. Because we sprayed it with all that WD-40 maintenance spray. And because we undone the anti-roll bar, uh, the anti -roll bar should be out of the way now. And we will be able to drop it just enough 
So it's coming out. I might straighten up the steering wheel to make sure the drive shaft is in correct position. I think it will help. All right, before I forget to mention, don't forget obviously to get this out of place. That's held at the back there. So the wiring is completely out of the way now. Get the brake pipe out of the way. Lovely jublet. That was a bit noisy. You need to use your air defenders, don't forget. Health and safety, yeah? So that is nice and free. All we got left is three bolts at the top that we know they're going to be free now. They're not going to snap at this time that your car is in bits. So just undo them. While you're undoing the last one, please make sure you hold this so it doesn't drop or damage anything like the sensor. So when you're undoing the last bolt at the top, grab hold of this with one hand and the whole thing will be out. So like I said, all we have to do now is undo them 30 mil bolts that we got there that were already loose. Lovely job, Lee. Once it's undone, you just have to press the bar down again and the whole shock comes out. Now before I forget, make sure that you take a note of the marks, how it's supposed to go back in there, guys, on the top mount, there's a couple of arrows. So just have a look at the whole shock and make sure that you mark it somewhere so it's all aligned, how you're gonna go back in. So as you can see, there's a mark there, how the spring's gonna sit, where you're gonna sit as well. So just have a good look at it, take a picture if you want, so it all goes back in, how it's supposed to go back in, to avoid all the noises and etc. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the spring compressor that we got here, and we have to clean this up because there's quite a bit of corrosion here. So I forgot to put a bit of grease on here. Um, so we're gonna clean it up, spray it with the maintenance spray, and we have to remove the pressure off the spring by using the spring compressor and undo that and obviously replace the spring or whatever you're doing, but in this case, obviously put the lowering spring on there. So like I said, guys, this is a spring compressor that I'm using. There's a lot of different ones, and this is the bit of the video that I'm um, obviously, due to the safety reasons, um, will advise you to do it to your knowledge or take it to the garage that can compress the spring and fit the new one on, because this is very dangerous bit of work they're gonna be doing. So I'm not gonna show you how I'm using the spring compressor. Uh, like I said, because you just don't want anyone copying me and then one day having an issue or something going wrong and blame it on me. Um, so yeah, please make sure you either know how to use it or take it to the garage to get the springs replaced. Now, whether you're taking it to the garage or not guys to get it replaced at this stage, I do recommend before you take it there or before you do it to clean up all of the thread. And also what you're gonna need if you're doing the job is seven mil Allen key to go in there, knock it in there. Like I said, you clean, once you clean that up, it should be ready to go. And you're gonna need 21 mil to undo that nut that you got there. But the tension has to be fully removed of the spring on there because if not, that will just fly off and hit you in the head or whatever. It can cause some serious injuries, guys. So please make sure you're being safe if you're doing it yourself. released all the tension so let's see because I cleaned it up it's nice and clean just hold it there and hope for the best yeah it's coming off you can see there is still a little bit of movement in the spring I'll just give it a little bit more lovely that's the nut off guys now one once the nut is off there's nothing holding it there so if you haven't got a um, spring compressor holding the tension of the spring, that's where things happen and you can end up going to hospital. Uh, so please be careful, release the pressure. There you go, that's off of there. Uh, make sure everything's fine because you got the little bearings in there. Make sure it doesn't come apart. And make sure it's nice and free. As you can see when it's turning, so this, when you turn your steering, this is where you're gonna be turning as well in the same time with the spring. So make sure it's nice and free there as well. If it's not, then you will need a new top mount. And I will put a link in the description below in the top mount for the top mount on Amazon that I've used before. Really good brand and it worked very well on my Tiguan. We're gonna do the same as I've done uh, on the back spring. We're gonna put copper grease 
on the bottom there where it sits so it avoids all the metal noises and the same with the top as well. I know there's no metal at the top but it just makes it a lot easier. Definitely put it at the bottom there. So just to show you uh, that bit obviously was out of there because it come out when the spring come off. Uh, so that needs to locate back in there, lock in and then the cover that you can see here it is slightly damaged but it should be fine. That should go in there as well and it will stay in there. Just locate it in there. It will lock in. slide it a little bit make sure it stayed on there and that is it that's how that's supposed to be to go back on there afterwards so I'm going to clean it up right so now you can compare your new spring with the old one uh, to see the bottom bit see if it's the same shape and the top one as well it's looking good to me obviously don't forget it's going to be slightly different but make sure that the angle is the same but you'll know that uh, when you put it on there at this stage we need to obviously compress the spring again to remove all the tension get the top mount on there and try and release the pressure while guiding the spring on the top mount so it stays in the correct place right so as you can see I compress the spring you don't have to compress it as much as you did the original one because obviously this is a smaller spring and it's easy to compress as well I've aligned the markings that I had on there and what we got now is to obviously put the nut on there now I do recommend using a new nut for this so this is where I'm definitely going to need to use my allen key and the spanner to do it up on there again guys you will need a more angle spanner than this to do this I'm just starting it up first anyway is 21 mil. It's kind of tight. Once done up, double check everything. Like I said, align this to make it easier going back in. Release the spring compressor if you're doing it yourself. Make sure that the spring is located properly on there and that the bottom bit is also located where the stop is. So that's all good. Just start releasing it because sometimes it can be slightly off and then you can. Uh, come off off the top mount and you don't want that so that's released all the pressure so like I said to get it back in there you're going to need your 30 mils at the top I'll clean them up a bit of grease on them as well while you're there get the shock absorber started and that's why I said it was important to make sure that the top bit you know where it is so you got two arrows there are pointing so that's how you're gonna go and you got the little uh, locate a bit there as well. It depends how you do the job, obviously. Right, that's how going to go in, and it should align. If it doesn't, you can always turn it a little bit once you've done all the three bolts up. So, you're going to try and get it up there. This is where it's nice to have a hand. But we'll get them back in there. That will help. Just align it as much as you can. And start the bolts up at the top. Just start them up loosely. Right, so now at the bottom, spray it with maintenance spray again. Uh, now we have to adjust it to make sure it starts going in there. Don't forget, you got a little tab at the back that I showed you earlier. I need to locate in the gap. So I'm going to use the tool just to lower it a little bit. Like I said, if you want now, you can turn it a little bit to help. To start in the right place and this is why if you're doing it on the floor I do recommend having a jack under the arm here as well where the ball joint is to help it squeezing the shock into the hub in my case I'm going to use the probably transmission jack uh, to pump it up a little bit it will help so what we're doing is just creating the pressure on there to help it going in there we go up a little bit you'll see it starts going in there you go so it just started to go in so just give it a wiggle because we've got plenty of maintenance spray on there it should help going on now at this stage double check if the tab is going in properly yeah it's looking good to me like I said if it's not grab hold of the water pump pliers Get it on there and just give it a little turn if you need to. I've just readjusted it a little bit. 
Yeah, that's perfect. So like I said, give it a wiggle again. Pump it up. You can use the tool now to open it up at the back. Like we've done while we're taking it off. There you go. That's good. Hold it open. Keep on pumping. There you go. Lovely. So I got the bolt in there. Uh, I got the nut there to start up slightly. I'm going to gun it on there. There is a torque setting for it that I definitely recommend using on there. So I'm going to gun it up to start with and then obviously torque up the nut to the correct torque setting. So you can do them up now. Like I said, the torque will be in the description below. Alright, so once you've done up the bolt there, don't forget to pull the wiring how it's supposed to be there. Do the 10 mil up uh, where it was to hold all the wiring and the hose as well. Make sure everything went back how it was and so nothing's interfering with the tire or wheel not rubbing or etc. It will fail on MOT and will also cause an issue. Obviously, you rub through the wire and then you're going to need new wiring and etc. So don't forget to plug in DCC as well on the shock absorber, clean it up, plug it in. Don't forget to pop the level sensor back on there on that little ball joint. Spray it with a little bit of maintenance spray and then just squeeze it with the water pump pliers or something like that. You go back on and then you got the anti robot link that we need to put back on there. Do it all up. Right, on them sensors, spray with a bit of um, maintenance spray at WD-40, locate it on there and use some pliers just to squeeze it on there, make sure it's nice and even. There you go, lovely job that's on there, just double check that it's nice and tight. So at this stage I'm all done, I've done the other side as well, the springs are on, just double check that you talk everything up correctly, make sure that everything's plugged in, make sure the wiring and everything else is out of the way, just make sure everything's safe guys. Uh, now we can put the wheels back on, go for a quick drive, let it settle to where it's supposed to be and then I'm going to show you obviously what it looks like now on 35mm drop and I can't wait. So here we are guys, I've been for a quick drive, it's looking really good, handles really well as well. Uh, so there's the drop, really happy with the drop, I know some people might think they need a bit more and obviously that's why you got the options of 40mm or 50mm, it's up to you depending on what wheels you're running or what tyres as well. For me, for my roads, this is perfect, that's how I want it. The brake is looking good as well, I'm going to show you in a second. So, like I said, my wheels are 18s, 225, 40, 18, and this is 9.5 alloy, so this is quite wide as well. That's why the only thing I might change is when I get slightly bigger tyres, that will fill it up as well. But yeah, there's no rubbing, there's no issues at all, so everything's working really well. Happy with the drop, and I'm going to give you a quick look at the rears as well. So this is just a quick look at the back. As you can see, we definitely lost even more at the back. And mind you, the car is empty, so it depends if you've got weight in the car, or if you've got people in the car. And also, if I drive it a bit more, I know it'll drop a little bit more, not much. But this is where I want it to be. And like I said, when I change the tires as well, it will fill up that gap. But yeah, I think it's looking good. I hope you enjoyed the video. Find it helpful, guys. If you did, like the video, comment below. Obviously, don't forget to follow all the steps. Like I said, I'll show you my way of doing suspension. Hopefully, you find it helpful and you follow it up. Don't forget to talk everything up. Uh, obviously, like I said, I got all the talk settings in my video, but you can look up yourself if you want, if you're not sure. And yeah, this is pretty much it. Just be safe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much, Demon Twigs, for the opportunity. And thank you, Hey Janar, for providing us with such a good quality product. See you soon. Bye.